Hey guys, Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your life easier. And today we're gonna make Japanese onion soup. You may also know it as hibachi soup. Now, my wife Tara loves Japanese hibachi, but being gluten-free, you can't always trust that it's gluten-free. So, we have to make it at home. So, one of the things I like to make is this super easy Japanese hibachi soup. You usually get it as a first course. Uh, it's a basic broth with a couple onions and a couple uh, mushrooms in it. And so, we're gonna make it at home today. Now, before you say I don't have an Instapot, I'll link down below to how you can make it on the stove or in your crock pot. So let's go over the ingredients. I've got two carrots and I've peeled them. I've got three stalks of celery. I've got an onion. I've got three cloves of garlic. I've got an inch to two inch piece of ginger and I keep my ginger in the freezer. So I'll buy a good sized piece of it and then peel it, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer. And then when I need it, all I have to do is cut a piece off. And it grates really well. If you need it finely diced or whatever, it'll grate really well from frozen. I also have eight ounces of mushrooms. I've got a box of chicken stock and a box of beef stock. I've got one big mushroom that I put off to the side for putting in the soup at the end. Uh, if your mushrooms are small, use a couple of them. I also have some green onion that I'm going to put in the end and gluten-free soy sauce. This will go in at the end. It doesn't go in during cooking. And I actually have been finding gluten-free soy sauce at Big Lots. So if you have one of those in the area, check it out. It runs a dollar a bottle. It's the best price I've seen on soy sauce. And so I buy a few bottles of this and stock up. Let's get started on how we make this. So let's get started on making this Japanese hibachi soup. It doesn't take very long. It takes 20 minutes in the Instapot once it reaches pressure. And I like to do it for 20 minutes on high pressure because we're not gonna eat the vegetables after. We're gonna strain them out from the broth. So we just wanna extract as much flavor from those vegetables as possible uh, because we're just gonna toss them at the end. They're gonna flavor that broth. So we don't need anything in itty bitty pieces. We're gonna do it pretty big. So I'm gonna take my onion, I'm gonna cut it in half and then cut it in some big pieces. You don't have to be precise. We're gonna throw that in there. We're gonna take our celery stalks. Just cut those again in big pieces. Throw those in there. My carrots, I like to cut in half. And then once they're in half, cut them into chunks. There's one. There's two. Our mushrooms, if they're small like this one, go ahead and quarter them. If they're bigger like this one, I usually do it in half and then I'll do a couple cuts so I get about the same size as the quartered ones. For our ginger, I just like to make coins out of it. Put it into coins, throw it in your Insta pot. And the garlic, I've peeled two of these and I've got a third one. So once they're peeled, or if you don't want to peel it, you don't have to, we just want to give it a good crush and throw it in there. Use the back of the knife. And then if they're not peeled, get a good smash. You should be able to peel it relatively easy. And throw it in. 
And then once we get all our vegetables in there, we're gonna add our boxes of broth. Again, I got a box of chicken broth. So that's 32 ounces. And then we're gonna add 32 ounces of beef broth. If you want it to be vegetarian, you could certainly make those substitutions for the broth and use coconut aminos for the soy sauce if you wanted. Once we have all our ingredients in, we want to put the lid on. Make sure it's set to sealing. And we want to adjust our time up to 20 minutes. And let it go. So we will be back as soon as this is finished and I'll show you how to finish it up. All right guys, it's been 20 minutes. Our soup is done. So we need to release the pressure from the Instapot and test out our soup. So let's get this done. Okay, our pressure has been released. So we're gonna open it up and get this strained out and give it a try. So guys, as you can see, I just strained it out. My used vegetables are over here. I've got this in a big bowl. And now we're gonna add our soy sauce. I'm gonna use one tablespoon of soy sauce. I think that's plenty for this. Again, this is gluten-free soy sauce that I got at Big Lots for a dollar a bottle. So if you have a Big Lots near you, you may wanna see if they have this. It is the Akita Soy brand and it is listed as gluten-free. Somewhere on there. Uh, right here on the package there, it's gluten-free. So I've added my one tablespoon of soy to this. And give it a stir. And I'm going to put it in this mug so you guys can see how dark and rich that is from the beef broth and the vegetables. I'm gonna add a little bit of chopped green onion to it. And a few slices of mushrooms to give us that effect like we get at the Japanese restaurant. So let's give this a try. Guys, here's our hot mug of Japanese onion broth or hibachi soup. It's got beef broth, chicken broth, and then we took mushrooms, garlic, ginger, carrots, onion, celery, and Put in the Instapot, got all the flavor out of those, strained it, and now we've got a great soup starter. Warm broth, if you want warm broth for something hot instead of coffee or tea, let's give it a try. Guys, this is pretty close to what you'll get at a Japanese restaurant. It's probably not exact. I probably took a little bit of leeway with what they do or added something different, but it's close, it's warm, it's gluten-free and I think you're gonna enjoy it. So I hope you give this recipe a try. Give me your comments down below if you do. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.